I just want to uh, speak on behalf of what I'm seeing going on in the nation. And the predominant um, thing that's happening in the secular world is there's this fear and anger. And I want to make sure that this does not fa fall on you at all. You should be above that and, and see through it for what it is. Because what you see going on in the secular, there is amazing things happening right now in the kingdom of God. Amen. That is absolutely astounding. And I want to share that with you so you know that even though what you see on the TV screen, there are greater things. See, Satan always overplays his hand. He's always going so far, but God's always got the answer and he's always working. And sometimes God's not always waving a banner. For, for, it's, you have to be in a state of mind with God in that secret place when you pray, which you spend time, that's where you'll get insight and peace with God. And so right now, just in New Jersey alone, there are pastors now coming together, believing that the churches have to begin to work together to keep others from failing. Too many churches have been failing for many different reasons. And so they're feeling we have to create one regional church. We're still separate, but we're coming together to help each other out. That's about to happen in September. This is over years of prayer. And now it's finally going to happen in September where the southern part of New Jersey is going to be connecting with the northern part of New Jersey. I was just in Bethlehem and an amazing thing where you have, um, uh, they, were, they were doing a whole conference about the Moravians. Moravians were a German people who were well known for their incredible worship and their, their praying. And they too were be becoming divided because of different things that they didn't agree. Well, what happened today, today is the anniversary of what happened is the Holy Spirit fell on them and literally brought them right together. You see, Jesus is the one who brings everything together. Jesus is the one that takes what's separated and brings it together, those who have their minds set on him. And so literally I was watching in Bethlehem. So Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, was founded by these Moravians. And they came from Hernhut, uh, Germany. And so I was there as... They were going over this Pentecost that happened that unified this group. And still to this day, you have reverberations of what they had done through their faithfulness in worshiping and prayer. They even founded the town Hope, New Jersey. And Danielle once told me that that was one of the most racist areas in New Jersey. And so I find that's how Satan works. He'll take what was good and try to pervert it. But you see, it's now being reestablished. There are groups of people now praying over this reinvigorating of turning back to God and, and seeking Him in prayer and worship with, with a pure heart, with, with the, the knowing of who He is. And that's what's going to solve all the issues that we see in the world today. And we already know that He wins. And one of the things that um, the scripture that came to me as I was sitting um, was John 17. Um, let me see. Actually, I'm going to go Romans 8. Romans 8 also. Um, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus, he made me free from the law of the sin and death. For what the law could not do in what was weak through the flesh, God did, did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. When you sit there and you look at the news and you get scared, or you, you what are we going to do? What's going to happen? You're in the flesh. It's by the Spirit that you get past that. It's by the Spirit you will find peace. And it's by God and by your prayer and faithfulness in Him. And be about spiritual things. Yeah. Don't. And that's what goes on. It says, um, <clears throat> For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. 
So if you're thinking along the lines of fear and what you're seeing in the news and North Korea and oh my gosh, what are we going to do? First thing you should do is pray. That's the first thing. And the next thing you should do is honor and praise God because you know he has an answer for it. And the third thing you should do is ask God what he wants you to do in your sphere of influence because you have a mission, you have a reason why you're here, and that's what you should be about. That's what you should be about, about what God's business is, not what you're seeing in the world. Okay, that's, I mean, we, we're, and that's the greatest thing. You see this church, this church has always been multicultural. Yeah. This is the type of church I want to be in because yeah. this is the church that God is coming for. A church that is not divided by race, creed, color, what your financial situation is. He looks at the heart. Yeah. And that's what we should be refining, allowing God to change through our time with Him, through our prayer with Him, through our worship of Him. That should be changing our hearts. Therefore, we have the ability to change others. Amen. That is where we are right now. And it's a magnificent time to be in the body of Christ. We are living in the most special time. We are, I'm watching kids worshiping in resting place on Monday nights. The whole thing is filled. Literally dancing with joy. Running around from ages 11 to 30 years old. That's happening now. And I, it's happening all across the United States. This is amazing. So be in tuned with the spiritual things, not the carnal things. Right. Don't get scared. Don't pray. That's we're all, we're a house of prayer. That's what God is. That's what He comes for. His house is a house of prayer. So prayer is always paramount. But your time with Him, your worship of Him, and then your asking Him what next, God? What do you want me to do? Amen. 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 Have a good. Thank you.